In last lesson, we talked about the circumcenter of a triangle. So today we're going to talk about 5-2, the incenter of a triangle, uh, which you'll see is fairly related to the circumcenter, but with a slight difference. Because we're talking about triangles, we may as well look at one. We see a triangle here. Now last lesson, we talked about the perpendicular bisector of each side, because we have three sides. In this lesson, we're going to look at the angle bisector. And so let's go ahead and draw some angle bisectors in here. Uh, let's see if I can do it well. Uh, we have, we're obviously going to have three of them because we have three angles. So our first is going to look something like this. We have an angle bisector, so of course we know that our angles will be congruent. Now we look at the other uh, two angle bisectors. Here's one will look something like this and again you have congruency and then we have an angle bisector which will look like this again mine is slightly off uh, just because it's it's difficult to draw but what we see is that they all meet in one single point they will always do this the angle bisectors will always meet in one point and what you may guess that we call this is the in-center. And we've got the definition up and it says that the in-center is the point of concurrency of the angle bisectors of a triangle. Again, the difference between that and the circumcenter is the circumcenter is the perpendicular bisectors where all of those meet. We did talk about uh, circumcenter and we mentioned something. So, uh, in-center is slightly different because for an in-center, an in-center is always inside the triangle. And that is unlike the circumcenter. So no matter what type of triangle we're looking at, the in-center will always be inside the triangle. We do have one theorem with the in-center. Um, and that will be theorem 5-2-2. What the theorem 5-2-2 tells us, uh, which is the in-center theorem, it says that the in-center of a triangle is equidistant, the same, the same distance away from the sides of a triangle. So let's look at that um, inside of a triangle. We have triangle ABC. A, B, C. I already went ahead and drew the angle bisectors in there. So these are the red lines. These red lines are the angle bisectors. And I also labeled the in-center. They all, they all, um, they're, con they're concurrent to one point, as you knew they would be. And I labeled it as I, standing for the in-center. Now, what our in-center theorem tells us is that the in-center of a triangle, this point I, is equidistant from the sides of a triangle. So we can go from this point to any side and all these lengths will be the same. So actually looking at that is that if we took from our point and we dropped a perpendicular line to one of the sides and we keep on doing this we go to the next side we drop a perpendicular line down and we do another perpendicular line so we have the, di the distance from I, from the in-center to all of the sides what our in-center theorem tells us is that all of these sides let's see we'll do it in orange all of these sides or rather segments, are all congruent to each other. That is the in-center theorem. Now it should be important to note, although these lines are perpendicular, uh, we, we dropped a blue perpendicular line, just because they're perpendicular, they are not the perpendicular bisector. As you can tell, it didn't cut AC in half. So just because you hear the word perpendicular, don't think perpendicular bisector. Anyway, the in-center in theorem, uh, drop, drop some perpendicular lines down from the in-center, and they're all going to be congruent. That's all the theorem says. Alrighty, we've got a problem here. We're going to use an example using the in-center. 
says that segment QX and segment RX are angle bisectors of triangle PQR. Find A, which is the distance from X to PQ, and also the measurement of PQX. So we're going to start off with A uh, and see what we can get done here for A. A says the distance from X to PQ. So what we're looking at is from X, which is this in center, to P, uh, no, I'm sorry, to PQ. So this segment right here, we're not looking at the segment QX. We're looking at the length from X to PQ. Well, one thing to read is that QX and RX are angle bisectors, meaning that this point is the in center. We can use use the in center theorem. We use the in center theorem and what does that tell us? It tells us that the length of all you know for, from X to PQ, so I guess what we're looking for is says that if, if we had to draw that in, let's go ahead and draw it in and we can label this you know whatever we want let's call it z we can say that xz the length of, of xz will be equal to the length from the in center to another side so let's say the length from pr so we can say that xz is equal to xy well we know that xy is equal to 19.2 and so therefore xz is equal to 19.2 and we are done now I created this z here you could do the same thing It is not necessary if you noticed that xy was 19.2 and you instantly knew that the length of x to over here would be 19.2 that is fine um, I just wanted to make sure I showed you this segment and that's why I had to make one up but of course you do not need to so looking at part b now says that we are looking for the measurement of angle PQ, PQX. So this little guy up there. Um, we go around and it's going to be difficult because we don't really know what to be doing here. Um, we know 52, we know an anglement measure, which is cool. Um, but the 19.2 we just found, that doesn't help us at all. And the 12, we know 12 degrees, which could be helpful. Now, one thing I do notice is that we have a really big triangle right here. And how many degrees are in a big triangle? There's 180 degrees in a big triangle. Now, what we could do is we could find out how many degrees we have used up in this triangle. And then we can see how much we have allocated left. So we know that we have used up 52 degrees already. We know that just on this left hand angle, angle QPR, we've used up 52 degrees. And so that leaves you with 128 degrees left over. Okay, so you only have 128 degrees left between angle Q and angle R. Angle R, how big is angle R? you might be tempted to say 12 degrees, but, but you'd be incorrect. I say that because Rx is an angle bisector, meaning that over by angle R, we have two congruent segments. One of the congruent segments is 12. What this means is that the other congruent segment is also 12 degrees. So actually in angle R, we've used up two 12 degrees or we've used up 24 degrees. Um, and so what does that leave you with? I think it's 104 degrees. That leaves you with 104 degrees to use for big angle Q. We're not looking for angle Q. We're looking for PQX. Half of angle Q. How did I know that it was half? We have, an, again, another angle bisector. So we have more congruent angles. Meaning that the 104 degrees right here is divided by 2. We have 
104 divided by 2, which will give you your final 52 degrees. And this is what um, the measurement of angle PQX is. And so what we used is not, not necessarily information about the in-center, but we used information about the angle bisectors. And that's going to be very helpful to realize. Okay, so what is the difference between the circumcenter and the incenter? Uh, we're going to look at this through an example I made up. Um, there's a triangular park bordered by Ace Drive, Back Boulevard, and Clear Street. In the park, there's a water fountain at each corner, simply labeled as 1, 2, and 3. Where should a playground be placed if the playground is the same distance from all the streets or the playground is the same distance from all the water fountains? So they want to come up with a playground and there's two options uh, to go with. So we're going to look at what we can do. Okay, so looking at a possibility of what this park may look like, we have A Street, Back, Clear, First Water Fountain, Second, and Third. So looking at where this playground might go, um, obviously it's going to be in the green park area somewhere. Uh, but part A says we want the playground to be the same distance from all the streets. So we want this to be somewhere uh, where it's equally centered, equidistant from all the streets. Well, didn't we just talk about that the in-center is the same distance from all the sides of the triangle? We notice we have a triangle here. And so if we were to explore the in-center, um, you know, the, the point of all these angle bisectors, then wouldn't this point be equidistant from all the sides of the street? And so for part A, all we need is to be on the in-center. Or, uh, yeah, we need to be, we're going to locate the, uh, the playground at the in-center of the park. And that's all we're going to use. And if, if for, a def, or for a reasoning, we could say through theorem, uh, through the in-center theorem. And now for part B, we read, and it says the playground is the same distance from all the water fountains. Well, think about it. We have a triangle still. We still have a triangle, and we have three vertices. That's where we want our park to be equidistant from, is the vertices of this triangle. Now think back. We mentioned that the circumcenter is the same distance away from all the vert vertices. So if we were to draw our circumcenter in, you know, our perpendicular bisectors, uh, there's one that looks like one, and the other looks like about here, then this point would be the circumcenter, and it's the same distance from all of our vertices. And so instead of being on the in-center, we would now need to be on the circumcenter. So try to understand that difference, is that um, depending on what we are trying to be the same distance from, are we trying to be the same, same distance from the sides or from the vertices? Because your answer will vary uh, between in-center and circumcenter. That's all we've got for today, so I hope you understood. And again, try to understand the difference between circumcenter and in-center.